Hey there, you Daniacs. It's Zach and Gus from GreatDaneCare.com. We're back today to talk about tips for leaving your dog home alone. Now we received the suggestion just a couple videos back in the comments, so make sure that you leave your comments below for any future videos that you'd like to see as well. Now whether your Great Dane is a puppy, a middle-aged, or an older one, uh, we all know that they are very attached to their humans and can be prone to anxiety, and as a result, they can get into a little bit of trouble when they're left home alone around the house. However, the good news is that with a little bit of training and practice, these are things that many dogs are able to easily overcome in a short period of time. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, make sure to go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss out on any future videos as well. Just like leaving home your own human kids, the first place that I'd recommend starting out with when it comes to leaving your Great Dane home alone is just simply considering the space that you leave them in. Uh, knowing that a young puppy especially is going to have a little bit of extra energy, uh, they could be a little mischievous at times, it makes sense to kind of restrict the area that they have access to actually get in trouble in. Uh, now if you're comfortable with crates and you're not going to be leaving your dog for a really long time, a crate is actually a great place to let them sleep, take a nap, chew on a bone, play with some toys, because it does confine them to an area where they can't get into trouble and just frankly wreak havoc. Uh, if you're not comfortable with using a crate, or maybe your dog's a little bit older and you just don't feel like it's worthwhile to contain them in a crate, um, you could also consider sectioning off a portion of a room. Uh, so for example, maybe putting them in a room that they're comfortable with, they have lots of toys in their bed, uh, but using things like baby gates and other measures to kind of confine them just a portion of it as another way to kind of limit their space. Now, whether it's the crate or this kind of smaller sectioned off portion of a room, you also want to take further measures to ensure that you kind of take out any items that they might potentially get into trouble with. Uh, so for example, things that they could chew up, uh, shelves that are in there with things that could be knocked off, or just things that would just generally be easily destroyed or of higher value that you don't want them to get into. See Gus, she knows what we're talking about here. She's never done this, she swears. Um, but inside this space, you kind of create that safe dog zone, so that way you've kind of removed all the human elements to kind of limit the trouble that they can get in. Um, now, once you've got this area set up, the next key step, of course, is to actually give them something to entertain themselves with. Uh, so, for example, if you were to just leave me or really any other person, you know, alone in an empty room, we would just go crazy. We'd be bored out of our minds. Um, our dogs are really no different, um, so you want to give them something to do as well. Uh, so maybe this is their favorite chew toys, these are you know squeakers, balls, uh, anything that will give them an option to kind of occupy their mind uh, without getting too wild and crazy in there. Now in addition to different chew toys and play toys, one of our personal favorites for leaving your dog home alone to help keep them occupied is actually the Kong Classic Toy. It's these big rubber toys, and I'll put a link to one in the description. Uh, but the secret sauce here, so to speak, is to not just to give them this toy, but in advance get a couple of these and actually fill them with peanut butter, put them in a big Ziploc bag, and put them in the freezer. Uh, so the beauty of this is that not only do Great Danes love peanut butter, but by kind of literally stuffing and filling up this Kong toy and putting it in the freezer, uh, the peanut butter itself will have literally frozen. Uh, so it takes the dog a much longer time to kind of be able to lick out and thaw the peanut butter that's been frozen inside of it. Uh, so of course this really uh, approaches this from two different angles for occupying them. One, the fact that they can chew on this you know, thick, rubbery, kind of uh, nice feeling toy here. Uh, but they also kind of get this little uh, you know, treat itself in terms of sucking out the peanut butter and licking on it, which most Great Danes tend to love in itself. Uh, the beauty of these is you can buy a couple toys, they're relatively cheap. Like I said, kind of put them in the freezer filled up with peanut butter, and then just as you need them, kind of pull them out one by one. And then when you come back home, just simply reload the Kong with peanut butter and go ahead and toss it back in the freezer and it's a confined space so that way you're not contaminating the rest of the freezer as well. One thing that I will point out with the Kong toys is that while the smaller ones will work while your dog's a puppy, as they get larger, for example, Gus's size at 140 pounds, or if you have a male who's 170 or 200 pounds, uh, just make sure that you're getting those larger Kong toys and not the little tiny ones. Um, one, they can be choking hazards, and two, their tongues will just literally never be able to get the peanut butter out, and you may end up getting them a little bit upset in the process of trying to, uh, to get that peanut butter. So those are really the two most critical steps in terms of starting with that smaller confined space, that way you're kind of limiting their access to roam the house and get into different bits of trouble. And then secondarily inside of that space, placing different things to help occupy them and keep them interested and not just completely bored of their minds and uh, you know crushed with anxiety, missing their human family members. 
Um, from there, as you kind of, you know, test the limits, so to speak, of leaving the home, um, I would keep them in this kind of uh, set space here and just slowly extend the duration of how long you're gone. Now, so your first few tests here may only be something like five minutes. And then as they perform well, you can test out 15 minutes and 30 minutes, then an hour, then two hours, and you kind of see where I'm going here. Uh, but this really gives them a chance to kind of work up and get used to the idea of being left home alone and realizing that they're fine. Uh, they may be a little bit anxious, but everything's gonna be okay because you will always come back to them and be reunited with their human family there. Now, once you've worked up to these higher limits of maybe a couple hours at a time and your Dane is doing just fine, that's the point at which you could try uh, maybe giving them a little bit more space. Uh, so for example, if they were starting out spending this time in their crate or that section off portion of the room, maybe you give them access to a whole room. Uh, so the key here is much like the, the step up of the time, you want to slowly extend the area that they have access to and not just go full bore from you're in a crate to now you've got the whole house. Uh, that's the equivalent of leaving your high school children home alone and expecting them to not throw a party on the weekend here. Uh, so work it up slowly and they'll get used to it over time. Now with these couple key tips in mind, the other thing that I would also recommend, especially in these early stages, uh, if they're a puppy or they just kind of do have higher energy or they've previously shown that they have some anxiety with being left home alone, um, one other approach you can also use is just to help them kind of burn off that energy before you leave the house. Uh, so maybe going on a nice long walk so that way they've kind of gotten out that excess energy or take them out to the field to throw a ball or play for a while. Um, so that way you're kind of releasing a lot of that pent up energy and when they come back to the house, they're much more likely to uh, maybe chew on that Kong tree, eat some peanut butter, and then just simply go ahead and take a nap. Um, that's one really good way to help alleviate the process if you've had previous problems and you're a little bit worried or concerned kind of going into the next phase here. All right, so for the things that I've talked about so far, I would consider these really the table stakes, so to speak, of you know the things you do to set your dog up for success in terms of placement inside the house and access to the things they have. The other piece that many people actually make mistakes on is actually what they themselves are doing as an owner um, that causes your dog in turn anxiety and gets them really wound up about the situation. They're incredibly in tune with your feelings and your sensitivity to these situations. So before you leave the house, it's really important that you don't make a huge deal about yourself leaving. If your dog senses that anxiety or your own nervousness, they're gonna feed off that. And the second you leave, it's gonna trigger them to say, uh oh, something's really bad. We need to do something to try to reunite with our owner or figure out what's happened here. Um, so I would really try to make sure that when you leave the house, it's a quick, give them a nice pat on the head, say, be a good dog. If you wanna tell them you love them, that's absolutely fine, of course, as well. Uh, but don't make a big scene of it. Just simply calmly walk out and exit the house as if there's nothing big going on, because really there shouldn't be. Now the same also applies when you return to the home. Um, now while you may be very excited to see them again, you wanna give them a ton of love and attention, um, a smarter way to return to the home would be to of course acknowledge them, maybe give, maybe give them a quick pat on the head, but don't go crazy and hug them and celebrate like it's New Year's or some other grand situation. Um, once again, just like how you left the house in a calm manner, when you return, it should also be a calm event as well to say, hey, I'm glad to see you again, but you know this is a common occurrence here. Uh, it's, it's not something you necessarily need to make a huge deal out of, just to once then kind of set their tone and their manner for understanding that this is just a normal situation and not something we have to get really wound up about as well. So with everything that I've talked about so far, this is what I've seen for the vast majority of dogs and I really mean 95 plus percent. That's enough for it to make it easier for you to leave the home and not have it be a huge ordeal or have your dog tear things up uh, while you've left them home alone. Um, for other dogs, there may be additional certain triggers that you need to address for certain types of anxiety, um, or if they love or have access to sit at a window or a door and kind of watch outside, um, that can really feed off the kind of the guard or watchdog mentality uh, that could be making them more anxious while they're left home alone. Um, so those are kind of certain edge cases you'd want to consider there. Uh, but generally speaking, the things that I once again have already covered uh, will help address this for the majority of dogs being left home alone. All right, so the last thing that I'll throw out, and I only do so under the guise that you need to speak with your veterinarian to make sure that's appropriate for your Great Dane and any other medications that they may be taking, is that I have heard from many Great Dane owners whose dogs did have severe anxiety problems, is they were able to help alleviate these through the use of CBD. Um, Gus, luckily enough, does not have this. So while she has tried a little bit here and there, it hasn't been a big problem for her. So we haven't found the need to use it on a consistent basis here. Um, however, there are different studies that are coming out um, that are helping to show that this can be a great way to help uh, ease these different anxiety issues 
if the previous approaches that I already mentioned were not enough to resolve them. So with that, I will put a link in the description. This is an affiliate link to a company that has highly rated CBD for dogs. It's also dosed appropriately for Great Danes and their larger size. Uh, if you're interested in it, take a look, read up in the literature. Uh, that's a decision that once again, you need to make and talk with your veterinarian about to make sure that it's a comfortable and good situation for you and your own dog. All right, so with that, that concludes our video on tips for leaving your Great Dane home alone. If you like the video, make sure to go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, stay Danny, my friends.